did we hear from um, Rebecca Hopper whether or not she was going to be able to join us tonight because she's the only one who's not in as far as I can see. There is no one in the waiting room. Okay. Well, I think we just get started without her then. All right, I will begin tonight's May 21st uh, board meeting with a roll call of all board members. Um, for the record, Rebecca Beal. Present. Linda Corliss. Present. Travis Dwyron. Present. Rebecca is not here. Denise Mallett. Present. Lynn Manley. Here. Nancy Newbert. Here. Joanne Potter. Joanne? You have to, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> You need to unmute. I'm not muted. Oh. Yeah. Are, you're here though, obviously, Joanne Potter and me as Peter Schaefer here. Okay. Uh, so for the agenda, we are going to begin with um, the public input statement from the vice chair. That's uh, me. Um, Um, all right. Uh, the first public input session is a 15 minute session with which in which each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input, for example, matters involving personnel. Do we have any public input? Not at this time. Okay, Thanks, thank you, Jen. All right, then let's move on to agenda item number three, the minutes of May 7th. Do we have any questions on that? Yeah, there's a part a that was, questions. sorry, go ahead, Travis. I think he's frozen. I think he's frozen. Okay, there's a part that was a little bit coherent. Um, it was, um, and, and Miss Potter seconded, it, it, it was, um, I think it should have read something like um, the motion was made and seconded or the motion was made to approve. I don't know exactly where it was. Let me look at it. I'll find it, Becky, and, and address it. It was just a little incoherent and uh, I think some words were left out. All righty. Okay. Any other comments? No? Okay. Uh, can I get a motion to accept the minutes? This is Becky. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of May 7th meeting. Okay, thank you. I'll second it. This is Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I will do the roll call vote. Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallett. Denise? She's, yes, yeah, somebody's not muting everybody. <laughs> yes, I know, I didn't, I don't know if people are, um, yes. <laughs> Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Astrida Schaefer. Yes. 
Okay. Okay, I'm going to stop the meeting for just one second. The reason I'm muting you is the feedback issue. You have to mute after you're done speaking or we're getting feedback. There's just so many people going. Um, so I was trying to figure out where that feedback was coming from. I apologize for that. I'm just trying to help with the meeting. Okay, I, I, I think we need to be able to proceed um, with the meeting. Does everybody know the trick about just pressing your space bar to unmute temporarily? I, I just, I, I'd like the board to be able to just continue with our business if possible. So. Where do you okay. Rita? Uh, I would like to move us on to the student report. Do we have our students here tonight? I don't see them. Right, you do not have your students tonight. They sent a late email that I'm um, apologizing, um, but they're both occupied. So, we can move on. We'll move on to number five, the teacher agreement approval. So the, um, the negotiation, the board representative negotiations committee uh, worked on probably close to 20, 23 teacher agreement, uh, tentative agreements in the contract based on language primarily and, and making adjustments to the contract. Um, and then a schedule was put forward um, late in the process as we were getting close to the pandemic situation um, in, in after March 13th. There was an offer made uh, by the Teachers Association and the board accepted that offer. And I have provided you the uh, copy of the, excuse me, Jen has provided you a copy of the, the contract with the language changes in it. The red highlights are the new language. The black cross outs are the language, follow the language that's being deleted. And a lot of that is because of adjustments due to the uh, as you may remember from last September 19th, the legislature dealt uh, in, made 72 changes in the law um, involving education, whether it was through the education department or the labor department. Um, and then uh, the Schedule A, which is the teacher contract, is a teacher salary scale. It's a one-year arrangement um, agreement. And then they also included in there the stipend list, I believe. Jen, is the stipend list in there? Jen's frozen. Okay. Uh, are there questions for me about the... I'm going to turn this clicker off here so it doesn't ring. Um, any questions for me about the uh, proposed contract language scale uh, schedule? I read it, and this is Becky. I read it, and I only found one typo, which is amazing. It's in section 14 um, under promotions. I don't know if you mean infilling or infilling. Uh, say the two terms again. Infilling or infilling, two separate words. Oh, yes, infilling, two separate words. Yeah. Okay, there's a space missing there then. So it's Roman numeral 14? Yes, under promotions. I'm sorry? Under promotions. Promotions. Uh, in filling. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Are there any other questions on this? Can I get a motion to approve the teacher agreement with corrections as noted? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the teacher's agreement with corrections as amended. Thank you, Travis. Uh, can I get a second, please? Get a second. 
Can I get a second from I'll anyone? Second I'll second it. This is Nancy. I'll second it. All right. Um, and then the committee member. I, there we go. We have the voice vote now. Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Jo jo Joanne Potter. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay, so that's 8 -0, so that is approved. So what we'll do is, uh, I see Chuck, I think I saw that Chuck was in the house, um, literally probably is in this house, but uh, so he's aware that that has passed. What we'll do is um, I'll take the corrections, we'll do the clean copy of that, I'll bring it forward to the uh, board chair for Estrita to sign, and then I'll also bring it forward for uh, Chuck to be able to add his signature to it um, as well. And then those copies will be distributed. Thank you very much. I appreciate the work of the negotiations committee. All right. Um, uh, item number six, donation update. So speaking of donations, the reason that I have a t-shirt on today for the uh, board meeting, there is a word strong down there somewhere. There it is. Um, th this is the noble, this is one of the two versions of noble strong t-shirt. I see Jen had her noble strong on today. That's the uh, uh, noble strong 2020. That is the black and white version. Um, we began selling the t-shirt in an effort to help to support the uh, to do two things the social emotional side of it that would that we're we we want to stay noble strong during this difficult time and that we also want to um, provide support to food service program because we're feeding up over 800 meals plus we've got the backpack program that's uh, 150 meals that go out every to a thousand meals going out every week and um, while we're at school, we get a percentage of that covered while um, through actually through June 17th, the last teacher day. And then after that, uh, because we're less than a 50% receiver, we'll cut, we'll be cut back by the uh, federal um, Department of Education to our summer feed schedule, which means that we would not qualify for the meal reimbursement and meals are costing us approximately $8,000 a week at this time. Um, Jen uh, has been the, the person that's taken this and run with it. Um, I think we had somewhere around the order of uh, 1,400 t-shirts maybe, Jen? Is that a uh, yeah in the ballpark or I'm off? Oops, she's frozen. Okay, so somewhere around 1,400 t-shirts and we've also received a number of donations uh, to support the program, plus people just driving up, handing out a $20. And they pick up their t-shirt order, donating extra. Um, we think we're probably going to end up somewhere in the $8,000, $9,000 range um, for the profit on this. Great thanks to Devin Dukes for giving us a fantastic deal. On the uh, on the shirts and doing such nice quality work as they usually do. Uh, I said fourteen hundred. She says thirteen ninety eight. Okay, right? Jen, I'll buy I'll buy two more. Jen, they get fourteen hundred. Um, we have people who are interested in ordering more T-shirts, so we're probably going to do a second order. We had pickup day this morning from eight to twelve. Yesterday from eight to twelve. It's mostly been. Uh, Jen, her two daughters, and Eva Hamill, who, who've uh, been working on uh, handing out the t-shirts the each morning. The third pickup day was originally scheduled for tomorrow, but the shirts will be ready at 7, 10 a.m. on Tuesday. So our pickup day for Friday is moved to Tuesday, and that's gone out to people as well. I'd also like to give a shout out to Ron Delisle and uh, to Ken, the custodian at the high school, for their help in uh, setting up and, and moving things about for us and arranging our tables, getting the, the tables for us, and then also 
uh, storing our materials safely for us. So we appreciate everyone's input on that. Great support by the community. And uh, you'll see listed on here, uh, Bubba Fries. So Todd at Bubba Fries contacted the office and said, can I do a $500 donation? And besides doing that, he also saw all of his employees, Noble Strong t-shirts. So um, because it's a $500 or more donation, means that the board uh, needs to vote to accept that. I'll make that motion to accept that uh, $500 from Bubba Fries. With many thanks, much thanks. I'll second that. Do we have to make a motion for the Noble Strong one as well? Or is that something that's not needed? For the what? For the t-shirts, the other one that's listed on the agenda. The, uh, the, oh, the community, community members, members, the community members one. We will be. Would you like to make one motion when we get to the? Uh, I, I can do the other one right now, and you can make one no. motion, Travis. I thought it was. I thought it was all related to the shirts until I just reread it to community members. So, we'll do this one first, I guess. Um, well, it it um, it started out related to the shirts. It's it's for food service as well. So I can say that at the same time. Is that okay with you? It's Nancy's original motion. So. Yep, that's fine with me. Okay. Yeah, All right. So, um, an, an anonymous donation of a thousand fifty dollars for a from a community member that is um, uh, for that will go directly to food service. So, two huge donations um, and and uh, several several small donations as well. But every bit, every little bit has helped us feed feed students. Awesome. So do you want me to make the, the motion? Yeah. Okay, so I move that we accept both of these donations to the food uh, service. And I will second that we accept both of these donations. Excellent. Um, any further discussion? Can I go just to the vote? Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay. Thank you very um, much. And we appreciate the donations from the community. Uh, last shout out I'll give out is to Brett Socia from our technology department who arranged for the online payments to be able to go directly to my school box. Gave a really good uh, description to people on if they did not have uh, a my school box, how they could do that very simply. And so uh, thank you, Brett. Um, number seven on the agenda, FDA update. Yes, so I've already given you part of that. Um, so the Food and Drug Administration right now is along with the DOE is saying that they they still are going to stick to the 50% rule for the summer. So what that means is if you run a program and you have a school program where 50% of the kids who participate in that program are free and reduced lunch, you can offer free and reduced lunch, uh, you can offer free lunch to all of those students. So when we had our programming at the middle school and students who came in, there was more than 50% of that group was free and reduced lunch for the last several years. So they have qualified for meals when we ran the program at um, our, our summer program at Lebanon and the group that came in also qualified and then our high school group also qualified. So we're able in pockets to uh, qualify for free meals in, in, with a lot of groups. Um, we do not qualify this year uh, for the groups that we're anticipating. We, we've got less groups, first of all, because, for instance, you can't run kindergarten jumpstart without kids doing the kinesthetic opportunities for that. It involves direct contact with students. Um, program's not going to happen, but our summer school work that we have planned will continue remotely 
and uh, Susan Macri's students in their extended school year will continue with remote programming as well. Um, so the, uh, our, I wrote probably maybe three weeks ago, uh, a letter to the uh, governor, the commissioner, and the legis and a, a local senator to say, you know, the, this is going to happen. And the recommendation we currently have is, if you're not a 50%, and what you can do is say to people who are in your programs, they need to drive to a district that is 50% and get a meal. So if Sanford qualifies in their programming, and I think they're looking at the numbers that they have and think they're going to qualify, so they'll be able to feed for free. Our students, if they go there, will be able to get meals for free. Let me ask you a serious question. How many families are going to get in a vehicle and drive to another school district to pick up a meal? Um, that's not realistic. That's not a great option. So that's what my uh, letter said. And I'm urging them to, to work, continue to push, and I know they are, back against the uh, Federal Department of Education and the FDA to say, all students this particular summer to continue feeding as we currently are and provide subsidy for that. Any questions on that update? What are we, what are we seeing for numbers of people that are actually taking advantage of this lunch setup that we currently have? Well, most, most of, if you put the backpack program and the and the the daily lunch together, we're we're seeing about a with it's about a thousand meals. So that's that's one in three students in our district, which our percentage is very is just that. Um, the program Steve, that it's we actually offer kind right of now, Travis, more than that. say that again. <laughs> That was me. Sue? Sue. Yeah, I was just going to say that it's almost 800 families that take five days a week of meals. And then we have the backpack program, too, on top of that. A lot of meals. That's true. That's true. I, so I should, re, I should definitely uh, qualify my statement. We hand out a five-day meal pack to 800 families. So if you think about it that way, we're handing out 4,000 meals in a week. Plus we're handing out uh, the 150 backpacks. Um, Sue, thank you, great clarification. Extremely different scenario. And we don't believe the numbers are gonna drop in the summertime, right? Questions? How many backpacks do you Thank you. What? I, could, what? I couldn't hear what you said. How many backpacks? Uh, 150 backpacks were packed um, recently, and uh, Rebecca Manning and uh, Sue Austin are the uh, and Rebecca's uh, sister-in-law. Um, I only know her nickname, which I'm not going to give you, but the <laughs> well, I don't remember her actual name. Uh, they are the stalwarts behind that. It's 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 and of course. Uh, Andrew Elwell as well. And there is just a, a smooth operation. Okay. So just in closing, thank you very much to our food service staff. Thank you very much to the people who donate their time and energy around the Mary Herod backpacks. Each meal obviously makes an incredible difference. And yeah, added my thanks too. I think I may have been muted partially. Um, okay, moving on to number eight, the financial summary. And that was received in your packet, I believe. Any Does anyone have any questions? I don't know, I have a question and not really, I guess it's related to that, but can, can you, it, can you explain again for us, because I'm, I'm not sure what the amount was, 
that the state said there probably is going to be, be a curtailment. I, I just have a, how does that work? Do they just not pay us a month yeah. or do they reduce the whole year or? So, yeah, that's a good question, Nancy. Um, back uh, three weeks, uh, there was a, she came out saying that, um, saying anticipated curtailment. And uh, the, early this week, there was information that came out that said, well, we didn't exactly say, we didn't print it, curtailment. And we're hearing that from people. And, uh, but we, the, the executive directorship for uh, the state superintendent organization and the, the uh, local the local group, the York County Superintendents Association, heard it the same way, uh, that we believed that the word curtailment came up in a conversation. Um, and that sort of supports the reasoning for allowing districts to carry over more funds than the 3% in the surplus category. So one right. kind of gets you the other one. Um, so the, if a curtailment happens, so in uh, 2000. 13 in, in January, I think it was of 2013, we received word from the State Department that there would be a curtailment in the month of June. So in, uh, and I think of the word curtailment, you could just take it out and say one of two things, either a complete cut that you're not going to see X or it's going to be paid, but it's going to be a late payment. And especially when you're into June, and that's after the end of the, that was after the end of the 2013 budget. So um, we had discussions with the associations, all groups agreed to, I believe it was one furlough day, which recouped about 120, uh, 125,000. And then we also uh, were looking at uh, riffing positions and I, if Denise, I, I can't specifically recall, but I think we did end up uh, riffing two or three different positions. And especially once the, the school year ended, we said we're not going to be able to bring back certain positions. And so, so we lost some probationary, really, really good quality young folks that uh, we could not carry into the 13 14 school year. So we don't really have. Say that again. Specific information yet? Okay, I just wondered. No, um, I have, but I, I would say it would be reasonable to anticipate something for next next spring. Okay. And I just heard somebody else say something. That was Denise. Just said something. Ben Campen. I was just Denise? going to say that um, again. The we have daily. Um, meetings with the department um, and the finance group at the department. Their, their forecasters, the revenue forecasters for the state will be meeting this summer, probably in August. And that's when they will start looking at where the state is running as far as a shortfall for revenue. Um, they, don't, they don't think they will have any information for us sooner than late in, in 2020. Um, and again, Steve was mentioning there were two types of things that happened to us back in um, 2009, 2013, that, that whole financial crisis. We had curtailment, which means they withheld funds. I would have to go back and look at the number, but I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of three or $400,000 that they just didn't send to us. Then one year they also, and that may have been the 13 year, their subsidy payment in June didn't arrive until July. Um, so one is just a cash flow issue. The other is um, less revenue, less money going to come in. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have now number nine, authorizing the superintendent to shift 5% between cost centers. So that's a little bit of a bridge. That's some things that might happen uh, in down the road in June. And so that would involve cost center work that I'd be doing. And then there may be some work that comes after that. Uh, but I imagine most of it will be before the end of this school year. 
and it's uh, it's a state statute that allows the superintendent to do that. So if you look at your cost centers, um, if a particular cost center is uh, short and had higher, uh, the expenses came out higher in that category, and then you have another one that had uh, funds left over in it for, let's say, the, the actual cost of something versus the projected cost of it, um, then you you shift money between the lines up to 5% to ensure that all cost centers are uh, better equitably distributed. And it's an annual piece to the uh, budget work that we do. Okay, so we need to get a motion and a vote to approve this? Yes. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the 5% shift? Oh, I'll make all a motion right. to I'll approve that. <laughs> Go ahead, Travis. Okay, Travis. I'll make, a I'll make the motion to approve the shift. All right. And Nancy, you're going to second it? Okay, I'll second it. All right. <laughs> Any discussion? I'm assuming I should have done that question first. but. It seems like a reasonable call. All right, I'll do the voice vote. Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwaran. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay. Edo, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, number 10, Edo, the assistant thanks. superintendent contract. Okay, so Sue Austin's contract would be from the term of July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2023. It's a 260 day contract. Her salary for next year would be 100. $119,616 in 26 equal installments. Um, what, uh, what other questions would people like me to answer about this? It's just one year, correct? Two years. Uh, the contract is actually a three-year contract. So like this one that, that is signed right now, the current one is July 1, 2019 to July uh, to June 30th, 2022. Administrator contracts for all the principals, directors, and so forth are two-year contracts. The central office contracts are three-year contracts. We we approve the money annually, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Gotcha. That's what, Thank that's you. That's confusing. That was the, that was the pertinent oh. point. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Can you, I? And you get... approve it annually because there is no there's no schedule that's right. put in there in advance. So it's an annual. Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Travis. Contract. Can I can I get a second? This is Becky. I'll second. Thank you, Becky. Okay, roll call vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay. Edo, thank you. Number 11, the business manager contract. So in Denise's contract, uh, once again, it would be July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023. Same 260 work days, and sometimes they're 24 hour work days. Thank you, Denise. 
Um, <laughs> I get reports when that van is there after a certain hour. Um, in the um, compensation for that, the salary would be ninety-eight thousand six hundred twenty dollars for the twenty twenty-one school year. Do we have any questions about that? I don't have a question, but I, I do want to just give out a thanks to both Denise and Stu for their um, constant and excellent work. Um, so thank you guys. Indeed, I, I, I agree I with wish... Yep, go ahead, Travis. I agree with Denise and I'll make a motion to accept that contract. Thank you, Travis. Can I get a second? Can I get a second? Yeah, second. Who, who had the right. second? I don't care. Nancy. Nancy. It Thank seemed you. to be Rebecca. I think I was okay, first, second. but I'm not going to fight over it. <laughs> <laughs> me either. We all love you. <laughs> Frida, you give me a name and I'll go with it. Let's go with <laughs> Becky. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Becky Beal. Yes. You have Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Dwyron? Yes. Denise Mallet? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And Mia Strita Schaefer? Yes. And to both of you ladies, um, you go above and beyond if our economic times were different. Let's hope that we can, hopefully we can do something in future. But we have to see how and, uh, things go. <laughs> I appreciate like it. Thank, thank you very much. The, uh, I'd like to particularly take a minute to thank Sue and Denise and previously Heidi Early Hersey and now Shannon Swiger for um, three of the other legs of the table that helped to balance out all the work we do at central office and across the district. So um, that work can't happen without their their um, unwavering support. I've greatly appreciated it. Thank you. As, as have we. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Steve. All right. Uh, number 12, administration contracts approval. So for uh, continuing contract administrators, we have, um, I'm going to read you a list of names. Susan Macri, Special Education Director. Shannon Swiger, Director of Teaching and Learning, Joe Finley, High School Principal, Allie Kearney, High School Assistant Principal, Tyler Windsor, High School Assistant Principal, Mike Roberts, Middle School Principal, Melinda Luters, Middle School Assistant Principal, Chris Russo, Technology Director, Mike Archambault, North Berwick Elementary School Principal, Michelle Keniston, Knowlton Principal, Patty Gilly, Lebanon Elementary School princ Schools Principal, and Heather LaFrance, Lebanon Elementary Schools Assistant Principal. So I would uh, ask for a motion to um, uh, regarding these continuing contracts. Sorry, Audrey, you're not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that motion. Thank you, Nancy. Can I get a second? I will second it. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> All right, voice vote, uh, Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay, moving right along. Number 13, uh, review meeting dates. Uh, no, we, no, go back. Oh, uh oh. What have I missed? Uh, there's, just a, there's just an extra piece oh. to this because those are the continuing contract people on the probationary ah. administrative list. We have Abby Pelletier, Food Service Director, Tracy Hallisey, Assistant Principal, North Berwick Elementary School, Adina Hunter, Excel Director, Spencer Libby, Mary Heard Academy Principal, Andrew Elwell, or co-principal, excuse me, Andrew Elwell, M Mary Hurd Academy co-principal, and Aaron Watson, athletic director. I would need a motion on that as well. Okay, hang on a second, let me. 
Sorry, I didn't have the right page up. Okay, can I get a motion on those positions? I'll make a motion to approve those contracts. Thank you, Becky. Can I get a second? I will second it. Thank you, Travis. Um, all right, voice vote. Rebecca Beal? Yes. Linda Corliss? Yes. Travis Byron? Yes. Denise Mallet? Yes. Lynn Manley? Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And Mia Strita Schaefer, yes. And I have to say, I look forward to the days when I don't have to read everybody's name off. <laughs> um, before we go on, I just have one. I just have one question on the vacancies. Yes. The, is there should there be a uh, assistant principal at the Husky, uh, Husky, the high school on that list? Because didn't we have one that we uh, accepted? We did, but the position is going to come forward this evening. Okay. You are right on track, sir. Okay. Uh, there's there's three positions that aren't listed on this because two of them were just approved recently, and one is up for approval tonight. And that is, um, we did the two assistant special education directors. Um, yep. Uh, Nicole Winship and Mary. Fitzgerald, and then tonight we're going to be, I'm going to be bringing a name forward to you very shortly for the assistant principal. Okay. All right. But in the meantime, we have item 13, um, the meeting dates review. Yes. So, so far we have June 4th as the next board meeting. And then June 18th, I would ask that the board keep that as a to be determined date. We don't know what it, it that will be after the uh, June 11 state of emergency is has expired. And so will there be another state of emergency? What's going to happen next? Won't there be what's what's the opening of the state situation? What's the school facility use? Those kinds of things. So if you would please keep June 18th just earmarked as a potential date for a meeting. And then also, uh, the second date that we would be using. So the first and the, well, the, the 18th was the 14th day. Um, please also, given the fact that the vote this, that there's a meeting scheduled this year, school budget meeting scheduled for the 23rd of June, would you keep the June 25th date available as well? I just wanted to review those with you. So and, um, for the 4th, 18th, and the 25th? Yes. Now, there's, so um, we've been working on uh, preparation for the June 23rd school, school budget meeting. It's typically held in the auditorium that would not be able to be uh, this. We can't prepare the auditorium for that particular setup, but um, we've come up with alternative plans that we're still in the construction phase of. While we're doing that, tomorrow we may get um, information from the DOE about whether or not statutes, significant number of statutes are going to be revised <clears throat> to remove the obligation meeting for this current school year. Sorry, can you repeat that to remove the what? <clears throat> the obligation for a school board meeting. So you might recall that in the every three years, uh, a district in the towns, they vote to uh, whether or not they are going to use that part of the process. It's not a, a, a required part, it's an optional piece. And in our district, in, in numerous districts across the state that is uh, voted on and approved. And so right now at the, uh, at the Department of Education in the governor's office, they're looking at what would happen because this, <clears throat> The plans are obviously significant, and there are some places that are having a much greater struggle with it than 
than what our plans are right now, but our, our draft plans. So rather than release the draft plans, I'm just waiting until I hear back from the Department of Education to see which direction the wind blows on that piece. And so okay. if there is a vote, we'll probably meet on the 25th, if there, depending on the results. If there isn't a vote, there's no need to more than likely to meet on the 25th. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, number 14, update on student waiver days. Yes, so uh, the, the, um, the commissioner provided a blanket waiver to the state this year to allow all school systems to set their end calendars without uh, the uh, 175 day mandatory demarcation. And so, um, in, as you know, from our previous conversations, we had set our finals, we, we uh, moved into April vacation, the 21st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th of April, had school on those days to help offset some days. And um, we're looking at ending our school stretch on May 29th, so next Friday for our students. Uh, there are students at the high school that will still have the opportunity to uh, continue to, I believe, uh, to provide some work um, as we have done situations like that in the past. But there will be, a, I think, a hard and fast cutoff date as of June 5th. Now, I could hear back from somebody at the high school and say, wait, this, it's this date and that date, but I'm, I'm in the approximate range. Anyways, I'm pretty close on that. So um, I did submit the information to uh, Pamela Ford Taylor at the commissioner's office. She oversees the waiver requests and organizes them into a streamlined format for the commissioner to review. Even though we're not required to do that, I have our district on record as to the rationale for those changes. Our significant concerns are around the idea that uh, the, the social emotional factor, the toll that this is that the uh, that the pandemic is taking uh, on students and families, as we've had to since March 13th, I'll convert over to remote learning and it's changed there's been a lot of loss for students and we're concerned about that and the impact on on their psyches and we're concerned about it for families as well and then the second piece is the last teacher day would be june 17th which means that we have a fairly significant stretch of time to work in preparation for the potential of a couple of different scenarios upon returning in the fall. We, the only thing we know is that uh, phase, what is it, phase four through August 31st is up to 50 student, 50 people in any congregation. So do we think that on September 1st, it's gonna be the noble high school rule that you can have 1,350 students and adults uh, go from 50 to 50, 1,350? and what's transportation gonna look like and so forth. And we know that some families will continue to opt for remote learning opportunities and may rely on the fact that there is no, there's probably a, 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 there's a very slim chance of having a vaccination uh, th that would be prepared by that time, a vaccine. So we're concerned about the need to at least for a good portion of students to remain re remote and also prepared to figure out we're working on scenarios about how to what would transportation look like i hope you enjoyed linda derocher's idea for transportation the uh, <laughs> little tykes little tykes vehicles and abby abby was also thrilled to hear they give us a deal on some kitchens um we are there's no great answer. There's no great answer out there. We're a district of 135 square miles. Just the transportation component alone is going to be significant. So um, we need as much time as possible to do the preparatory work for what the fall could look like. Um, the other piece about that is since we're doing that between 
the end uh, between May 29th and June 17th. It's on this budget. It's built into these salaries that we have and wages that we had placed at this time. It means that if school uh, continues to look wildly dissimilar to schools of the past, if they continue to be remote next September, that we, we won't be able to say to teachers and other staffs, please back for two weeks in August, we have this extra pot of money that we're paying everybody their, their per diem rate to come in. That's not going to be a possibility. So we have to use the time now this year to be prepared for September. Any questions? We're having a good time figuring these things out. I, I highly bet. recommend if you ever want to retire, this is the way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, the way to do it is the way I did it. Retire last year. <laughs> <laughs> I've, that's gone through my mind, Nancy. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Never a dull moment. Um, okay. Number 15, a discussion of the question of the head coach pay. Okay, so um, we, uh, I've been working with Denise and she, actually I've been talking with Denise, she's been working on the topic. Um, she's put together a spreadsheet that talks about the kinds of positions and, and what the status is of the pay for those positions. I'm just going to take a second and go to that. Um, so we have uh, we have uh, over 200 stipends we pay out during a year, and in the first half of the year. Can you say that again, Steve? In, we have over 200 stipends that we pay out during the year, whether they're clubs, activities, sports, and any leadership teams at schools, uh, uh, after school activities, so forth, that we, that we pay out during the year. People also get paid stipends to do um, pieces that are connected to their job, like uh, uh, being a, a choral director, being a, a directing the musicals, PLC facilitators, subject area coordinators, team leaders, uh, new teacher mentors, yearbook, district evaluation, steering committee, NASA on universe, uh, NASA on uh, hospital liaison, standards recovery, instruction. Uh, th those are just some examples of uh, uh, SEAL stipends, FOSS science coordinator, standards, oh, I've already mentioned the standards recovery, homeless liaison for, um, student, for uh, people that are in the uh, teaching ranks that uh, falls under work that Sue coordinates, <coughs> cooking club. RTI committee members, response to intervention. Uh, one act plays, dramatics coach, civil rights teams, jazz band director, band director. I think you get the certification advisor. So there's uh, class advisors at each level at the high school, the green team, STEM stipends, chemical hygiene officers. So those are, that's a, a math, math uh, team advisor. So those are a lot of examples. Uh, Chinese exchange program, National Honor Society. Uh, the list goes on. Like I said, there's 200 different things, um, over 200. And so in the first half of the year, we paid out all of the contracts that um, we had in operation. And then in the second half of the year, um, halfway through, 
March 13th, we had this event occur and a, a lot of things changed. And so what we tried to do was to set up a system that we thought would be that we could fairly represent to people, which was if people are doing the work that the stipend was designed to pay for, then we would pay the stipend out. If they were doing a portion of the work, we would pay a portion of the stipend. If the stipend was not able to be conducted because of whatever the situation, state of emergency and so forth, then we didn't pay the stipend out. Now, under, um, under the legal uh, piece behind that, we're not required to pay out money for positions that weren't done. And this doesn't fall under the payroll protection plan because these are uh, stipended positions. They're not the primary wages and salaries positions. So for instance, in the second half of the year, uh, we paid out half of the choral director position, half of the music position, half of the civil rights pep band, French Honor Society, Student Council, Sober Friends, the RISE group at Noble High School, nighttime coordination, dropout night, like the Noble Knights, Night, that night time, uh, dropout prevention, seal stipend, star course, uh, seal is the, uh, one of our two endorsements. We have a STEM endorsement and seal endorsements for graduation. So the seal stipend, the star coordinator role, uh, the oversight for our star testing because we did not have a spring window. Reading best practices is one of the stipends that's used. We paid out half of that. Outing club, student council facilitator, civil rights, green team, more civil rights, green team, jazz band, French honor society, Spanish honor society, more stands and, and sober friends, civil rights, unite club now uh, role play. It's a it's a role play club, gaming club, and then um, with the coaching positions, we considered those under the same lens, and um, we did half pay to the varsity coaches who oversee the programs and do the majority of the work in those programs. They're the people that are typically the year round folks working uh, whether we have some programs that people who are our varsity coaches are fairly involved in their um, feeder programs. And then we have some other programs in which coaches are in the feeder programs are still disconnected at the, uh, from the varsity to the middle school or to the elementary level. Uh, they vary significantly and uh, for, for different reasons. So we did not pay out uh, the middle school positions or the assistant coaching positions as those jobs did not occur and were highly unlikely to have specific roles to play with students. Um, so uh, Denise, I'd like to, uh, if you wouldn't mind unmuting and, and then just chatting a little bit, you wanted to discuss the stipends and how we got to, what's the decision and what kinds of things are impacted? I assume you mean this, Denise. Yes, yes, thank you, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. You know, the, the explanation <laughs> is helpful. Um, I think the, uh, can you, you know, I think can other people has... can other people hear Denise okay? Mm -hmm. Denise, can you do you have can you increase the volume a little bit? I'm gonna get all the way in. <laughs> oh hey, uh, great. I <laughs> not know how to increase the volume on the microphone. <laughs> okay. Um I you know the I think anybody that runs a club or a program is obviously, you know, putting in extra work. I'm I I'm not really interested in sort of comparing them because there's 
like you said, 200 on the list. Um, mm. I do think that uh, I, I realized that as a board, we voted on this. Um, and it, I just was, I thought it was worth a little more discussion. I think that the amount of time that head coaches um, put into individual player development, team development, um, future development, which has no impact on, you know, Noble High School sports, but it does impact, um, you know, kids' lives significantly. And I, I just feel like in general, you know, Noble has a special place in sports. We sometimes have winning teams and sometimes we don't, but there's, a, I think, a tremendous spirit. I also think that, um, you know, and, and I'm not, I'm not coming at this with an opinion. Um, I, I can speak as somebody who has coached a tremendous amount and never gotten paid a dime for it, um, that it, the amount of time that goes into it is, it's just, it's, it's endless. And I, I, I don't know, I, I, I just want to make sure that um, I think the impact of not paying the second half to the head coaches is is more significant than the dollar amount which was already budgeted so um obviously it's you know that's that's just uh that's my take it was something i should have spoken up at the time i i didn't really i think when it was brought to the board it i didn't really have any time to think about it or process it ahead of time but if i had i would have said this at the time but I, um, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna lose coaches. I think it is, it is a, um, they do put in a tremendous amount of time and certainly earn more than the whole stipend that they get, not even in season. The vast majority of them, obviously everybody's a little different, but um, yeah. so I just, I think that, you know, the sports are not everything certainly, um, but they they do play an important role for a number of kids. And um, I think the, you know, I, I guess I would just want to reconsider. I still don't know what the dollar amount is for the head coaches. I don't think we ever got that information, but um, I, I don't think it's a tremendous amount, if I recall from um, the, the budget last year, but uh, I guess I I don't I think that all those clubs are important. I think that a head coach position is different, and I also think that for for people that are coaching um, that are not district employees that have other sort of nine to five jobs, they often are making adjustments in their own jobs so that they can show up at you know two thirty for however many months and begin coaching. And I actually think that's a big part of it is that they have had to make sacrifices on their own careers and schedules to commit to this in advance and then to not get that. So I, I realize that, you know, we're not in a great time from a budget standpoint. I would, I would say that this, this money was budgeted. Um, and I, I think they've probably put in the time already. So that's that's my opinion. I'm sorry that I didn't speak up a month ago, two months ago. Um, but at, I believe at the time it wasn't a budget consider. It wasn't a budget decision. It was um, anyway. So that's 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 my take. And um, I guess if anybody else has any thoughts. So you you asked a question about the financial picture on that. Um, Denise Van Campen, correct me if I misstate something. So the scheduled amounts that we had to, that we had to pay out in our stipends between the start of the year, I believe, and May 22nd. I'm just, I'm just curious about the half to the head coaches that wasn't yep. paid. Oh, I don't have a breakout on that. I, I know I, that the total amount of unpaid to all groups was 70000 Ninety-two dollars. I don't have a specific to uh, head coaches. So I can speak to that. Um, there were um, 
let's see, there were five head coaching positions at the high school that were paid half of their stipend. Yep. We had girls lacrosse, boys lacrosse, baseball, softball, and outdoor track. And the unpaid amount, so the unpaid half is approximately 13,000, a little shy of that. Uh, yeah, 13,000. We lost. Steve. If you're going to do that for the head coaches, then I think you have to do it for the other activities too, to be yeah. fair. Thank and you. I That's don't right. agree with that. And I'm a yeah. coach. So, Good not in this team. district, but I, I don't I don't see how we get around that fairly to everybody. Yeah, I, um, um, Slinda, I, I agree. I don't see how you, I mean, there's, the theater is just as important to the students who do theater as lacrosse is to those who do lacrosse. And I'm sure those directors do a lot of work all year <coughs> long as well. It's unfortunate that we're in the situation that we are with everything going on. I, I just, you, you can't pick a handful of people I think they all do a great job and just select them to get the full pay and everyone else get half. Um, I, I think you run into a huge equitability issue um, and you start pitting sports against theater, against you know the debate team and, and all of those kinds of things. And that, that's not gonna end well. We already did separate it out by choosing to pay some half and some none, so. It's, right, but I think they had done more. There had been more. They had done more work. Their well, that's that's what I'm suggesting is that is that yeah that we use that same. But the other activities got paid if they were the only person doing it, right? Like if you were the drama coach, you don't have but anybody underneath you. You're doing the whole thing. They got paid half, right? So. Uh, if so if anybody if who a was drama a program, program didn't occur, yeah. <clears throat> sorry. Well, no, the middle school coaches did not get anything, and they, right. they, they none they of their seasons occurred. <clears throat> so, so we, we've already made a distinction, and the question is going to linger into the fall. If if school, I. I, I, none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know. But if school were to be remote for the fall, how does that impact the decision at that point? So how do you get coaches or any? I mean, uh, I, I would I would assume that the majority of the clubs are staff. Right, I, I assume that the, the people that are running the clubs are current staff, but a lot of the coaches are not, or they maybe some are and some are not. So I, I'm just wondering, how do you get people to commit to a coaching position if they don't know that they're gonna, if they, I don't know. So um, I don't, I don't I think, think that I think that we're, is not um, this is not obviously just an MSED 60 issue. Um, I think I shared an article with you guys that this is a kind of a statewide issue that everybody's dealing with it in different ways. Um, some folks are paying nothing and some are paying full and then it falls anywhere in between. Um, so I don't I don't think there's a, any right answer or easy answer. I think we, we were trying to sort of go by um, what activity had occurred and what didn't occur after the March 13th date. So that I think, and, and again, I, I don't think any of us feel really good about any of it. Yeah. Um, the, the, that was, so was that the Portland press Herald article? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was yeah. Portland press or Bangor daily, but yeah, I shared. So one one I, one, the one I read was out of the press Herald and it was about, even even just here in in York County, as I noticed the districts that were in there, it was, you know, certain play certain positions like varsity head coaches got ten percent, but in another district they got a hundred percent, or in another district they got two fifty or five hundred or something like that. I mean, 
from coaching positions to you name it, whatever it was, there everybody's everybody's struggling with that, and the struggle's not going to not going to stop this spring. I just I have you know I have my certain assumptions about fall, and and I don't want to preclude anything, but uh, trend wise, I think that um, that this conversation's not going to I don't think Denise. I don't think today is the end of this conversation. No, well, I, that's fine. I would just like to, I guess, voice publicly the appreciation for the amount of work that it, these coaches put in year round in their player development and um, what they're doing for these kids' future is is definitely significant. So I guess I just want to, um, you know, just I just want to say that publicly. And I and I don't actually agree that all the the clubs are equal. So um, I think they all have equal value, but I, I don't think that's not as equal at all. So we can we'll have to discuss it again, I guess, for the fall. Yeah. It's I think you're going to end up discussing it again. Yeah, because I think the argument can certainly be made that for different kids, the different activities can be equally important. So. It's, I think if the school offers the opportunity, it matters to somebody. It's not going to be offered unless it does make an impact on a student. So, but as you say, this is a discussion also carrying forward into the future. Okay. Um, can we move on to? So I'm going to start off with uh, administrative positions. Uh, Jen Fluel, I see on the, the list that we have one administrator position. And I did not notice in advance that we should have had two administrative positions on it. One that we had previously talked with the board about the potential of. So I'm going to mention that one as well tonight. Uh, we have an opening at Noble High School for an assistant principal. Uh, there was a person by the name of A.J. Dufort who used to be an assistant principal at Noble High School. Highly respected for his skills in that job. Um, excellent listener, kind of an unflappable sort of young man. And uh, he, he took a principalship in another district in York County. Um, and since that time, he is looking at uh, life balance. He's looking at the loss of the opportunities that he had uh, in Noble uh, to be part of the Noble High School activity that's just it doesn't, some of the things that we do just aren't happening. They don't happen in some other school systems. That's fine. Um, every school system has their their differences. So A.J. Duport uh, surprised us, applied for the position, and would love to be uh, a member of that administrative team again. And he, uh, after the interview process, he was the successful candidate to be brought forward to you today. Hey. Successful candidate to be brought forward to you today. Okay. Any I'll make questions? a motion to accept that position. Okay, that's yes. excellent. Uh, do I have a second? I'll second Ready? it. Okay. Um, um, who, who has a second? Becky. Becky, thank you. Any comments or questions before we go on? All right. In that case, I'll do the vote. Uh, Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Rebecca Hopper isn't here. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Okay, I, I know the Noble High School administration will be thrilled. That's an excellent uh, thing. Yeah, it's, it's hard to lose Jamie Jones, but uh, uh, we, we each have our, our personal flavors on the kinds of experiences we want. And A.J. Dufort is going to be thrilled. Uh, the other name that the, the board has already uh, had, adult education directorship position. And uh, Jen, I'm sorry I didn't uh, uh, Pick that up beforehand. Um, I saw Nicole on here, but it's the wrong one. Uh, 
uh, for something else. And then, uh, so there, we we had um, we had put out uh, for hiring a, a director. We had a, a significantly small under ten. Um, we did not have any candidates who were within uh, earshot or or a horseshoe leaner of having any kind of certification to do the particular position. We knew from talking with other districts that had gone into shared positions that they did not have pools for that, um, uh, for their districts either. Um, certainly our program has its uh, unique qualities and strengths. Our enrichment programs are just, just the craziest offerings. It's, it's incredible. And of course, our high sets a strong program as well. So um, we were, you and I were in discussions with uh, other area superintendents about what they're doing with their situations. And we had a conversation with Matt Nelson, who is the superintendent in Sanford. He, this year, they've had uh, an interim director by the name of Nicole, Har uh, Nicole, Harvey, Nicole Ivey, who happened to be a... Uh, she's a local resident. I think she might be. A, is she in Lebanon, Sue? Yeah, she lives in Lebanon, and but um, okay. but is, she's building is in she North building Berwick. A house? Yeah, yeah, North building Berwick. a house in North Berwick. So she's a she's a local resident. She's known to us. Um, Sue and I also have had. Uh, Sue's had much more experience uh, experience in interacting with Nicole. I've had uh, a decent amount because she's been involved in activity around uh, safe schools, around uh, drug-free choices, about substance abuse prevention and support. So she's a, a known entity. Sue, can you uh, talk a little bit more about your experiences with Nicole? Sure. So Nicole has, um, again, had said the, the, the stronger, basically she's part of um, Stanford Strong group and as well as just working this year in the in specifically in the adult dub world but i'd had some dealings with her over the past three or four years working on the substance abuse issues um, in our area um, and nicole has a ton of um energy and great ideas and is is very much looking forward to taking this role on working with our current staff and just um having the opportunity to do some collaboration with the two the two programs. Um, I think it's I think it's a good match for us. We will be um, we met with the adult ed um, staff. Steve and I met with them last week, and um, we're gonna hopefully, if all things go well tonight, we will um, set up a meeting with the staff um, and Nicole directly um, next Wednesday, and Audrey is gonna join that as well. And Nicole and Brenda Gagne have uh, met uh, two times, once uh, on a long distance trip to some, some conference someplace and the other time at Noble High School in our, in our uh, central office area. Um, so they, they get a little bit of flavor of, of, of how each other thinks and works and what could happen. Sanford is a large, is considered a large program in the state, and our program is identified as a small program. It's largely about how many people do you have that come through that are working on the high set. We believe the number of that will increase but, uh, because of the economy, but will still be um, a, considered a small program. Um, it doesn't take into account what's the volume of the traffic that you have for enrichment, which is just crazy for us. Uh, they do, a, uh, our folks just knock that out of the park. Um, we have talked with Matt uh, and uh, we were, we're interested in having Nicole be a split position. She's worked out really well for uh, Sanford schools this year. We're interested in having her as a split position, um, a shared directorship. The other thing that that does for us is um, at the state level, because there are so few candidates and because they're looking for cost-saving measures, they're talking about regionalization plans. Have you ever heard that word before? Regionalization. Everybody say it with me. Here we go again. Uh, so um, the idea behind that is let's have uh, hubs. 
And we really would prefer to have more local control over what's going to happen with our adult ed program. So we think that the collaboration between our two districts will answer part of that question for the State Department. And we think that it'll also allow us to borrow from each other the skills and the, and the strengths that we have um, and share and grow that way. So Nicole Ivey is our candidate for uh, split 50-50 leadership between the school, the two districts. And we split the cost down the middle, just like we do with a, uh, the technology department with 35, for instance. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, but now we're now we've already finalized everything with each of our boards. So we need a we need an approval from you guys for real. Excellent. Uh, before I ask for motions, any questions from the board? All right. Can I get a motion to approve the hire for this position? I'll make a motion. I even waited a little bit, guys. Wait, you I did. <laughs> You're all over it tonight, Travis. This is Becky. I'll second it. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. Okay, voice vote. Uh, all in approval. Well, say uh, yay or nay. Uh, Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yay. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And Mia Strita Schaefer, yes. Great, thank you very much. We're very excited to have her move into the fold. And that will be, as I said, it will be a, an interim position for next year. And we'll see how it works for Nicole. We'll see how it works for the district. And then from there, you folks will be making some, uh, some considerations on next steps, okay? Sounds good. Good. Um, do you mind, Streeter, if I just move in to keep going down the list, new hires? Yes, please. All right. So we have Nicole Harvey at a Huzzy Grade 1. We had a teacher leave fairly, fairly early in the school year, uh, and Nicole took over a classroom for us and did a fantastic job. We would love to see Nicole continue in that position. Would you mind if I gave you the one, two, three, four positions, to, or yeah, four positions together instead of asking for four separate votes? Or would you prefer 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 four separate votes? I'd like let's let's group them together. I appreciate that. Um, young guy named Sam Lenson uh, out of Umaine, Orono, is our candidate for uh, Noble Middle School Physical Education. Sam is a, an incredible young human being. He started a mentorship programs up at the university on his own. He also started uh, bringing in uh, professional athletes, the Division I athletes at the, the UMO campus to uh, go to the uh, Cohen School where he was working. And I forget the name of the other one. So he, is, uh, he, he comes uh, as a highly regarded I call him a commod, but uh, great conversation with the young man. And then um, Matt Hosper. Matt Hosper was a, an intern at the Casco Bay High School in Portland, which is their uh, standards-based high school. He has very similar experiences to the kinds of work that we do here at Noble, um, a lot of project-based learning as well. And we're looking at hiring Matt. He's uh, an ETEPR uh, from the University of Southern Maine programming in the master's degrees. And he is a candidate for the Noble High School grade eight math position. And we're very happy. First of all, I'm really, really happy to be able to give you a candidate for the job because the pool is, is not there. So we, uh, we definitely wanted to make a move on Matt before uh, anybody else did. And then uh, the next, uh, so those are the teaching positions. Um, then there's, there's a third position that I, I will uh, tell you about here, a fourth position that is Jim Domaraki. Domaraki, he is the candidate for the varsity basketball program. Um, he is, uh, a collegiate, he's a former collegiate uh, coach, high school coach, middle school coach. He's a, 
a former assistant athletic director, a former athletic director. He has over, I think it's like 26 years, something like that in the field and experience wise, he comes highly recommended. So we would love to see Jim Joe Meraki. We had a good pool for that. And he was the uh, unanimous choice of the, of the group. And that was uh, probably five people that met. Um, and, and it was great for those folks to come in and spend some time and take care of that work for us. Steve, do you want me to add in the, the three people that I interviewed? Oh, this uh, excuse me, that's for, um, for that just happened in the last couple, what, yesterday for Pat? Yeah, I interviewed three people yeah. over the past two days, yep. That yeah, was yesterday? Want, yeah, do you want me to add them in or do you want to wait? May we? May we, okay. So, because if we, um, if we add these people in now, then we can lock them in and not have to right. tell them we have to wait two weeks to hear right. what exactly. happened. So um, we have two counseling positions that are open in Lebanon. One is um, a straight school counsel, like the typical school counselor piece. That's, um, so that position is being filled hopefully by Mark Hubbard, who has his master's degree, works at um, the King Middle School right now in um, Portland and did all of his um, intern and practicum work there as well. Um, super nice guy, and I think um, it'll be nice to have a um, another a, like a male influence in the Lebanon schools. There's a lot in our elementary schools. It's often very um, you know female oriented, so it's good to have some some guys in their group. And so he's very much looking forward to joining us. And the other one in Lebanon um, is that mass. It's a the position that we have put in for. Um, a half-time social worker and a half-time counselor because one of our counselors is going to go down to part-time and that is where we're offering the position hopefully to Nadine Fenderson. Nadine has been in the world for a long time. She's done about 20 or 25 years in just typical social work services with Maine Behavioral Health. In the past five years she's been up in Farmington, Maine with um, RSU9 working there and and um, in an elementary setting. So she's excited to come, but she's actually from this area. So she's happy. She's excited to move back to our area. So did, I see, did I see, was she the one that I was, I saw on her? She's, she's also had BHP experience. Was that her? Uh, nope. Nope. That's the next oh. one. <laughs> so although she's, Nadine's done it all. I mean, she's just been, she's worked her way up through the ranks. Um, regarding social work services. The last one is um, for the eighth and ninth grade case manager, special education case manager at um, Noble High School. So this position, um, we were looking for to a young woman named um, Corey Tondro, who is um, currently working at Kids Connection in Kittery and um, she's, she is a young young lady. Just she's doing the behavioral, the BP position that that um, he was talking about. Just she has her bachelor's degree from UVM, and she is very excited to get started on her career. So um, Susan highly recommended her to us when through the uh, interview process. Can you spell that last? Uh, can you spell her last? Yeah. Name? Yep, I can. It's T O N D R E A U. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate it. Sure. So, and she would be, is she, as the case manager, is that Mary Fitzgerald's position or is no, that? No, that's actually um, one of our retirees um, from the oh, high school, okay. Paula, and she's stepping, you know, she's retiring. So, Corey, oh, yeah. you're going to step into that role. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Is that everybody then? Everybody that everybody. I know of. Okay. So, can I get a motion to accept these people for their relevant positions? I'll make that motion. This is Nancy. All right. Thank, thank you, Nancy. You. Can I get a second, please? This is Becky. I'll second it. Thank you, Becky. All right. I'll do a voice vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer. Yes. 
Super, thank you. Um, I do not have any retirement notifications at this time. And for a resignation, I don't need any action on the board because a person that we hired uh, at the last board meeting uh, decided to back out of the position. So that's Morgan Ross, that she was the anticipated great person and Matt Hosmer will be taking that position. Oh, I did have one other resignation that is on the list that came in this like yesterday, and that is Michelle Raymond. Michelle is a highly, highly skilled teacher for us, young lady. She just does a great job, and unfortunately, she is going to move over somewhere near the other Portland, like the Oregon or Washington, and she's going to be doing animal training, I think. So I was like, that's a little different. Um, she, she is uh, up for big challenges, and this is the one. So I would need the board to accept her resignation. All right. Can I get a motion to accept her resignation? This is Becky. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation. All right. Thank you, Becky. A second, please. Can I get a second? All right. Thank you, Linda. Okay. Uh, voice vote. Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Denise. Yes. Uh, Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me as Drita Schaefer. Yes. Okay, Ido, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That is the list for now. All right. And now we move on to 17 others. I have just a, um, one thing that's, that's an, starting to be an issue for us and is going to continue to be a very difficult issue, and that is field use across the district. Uh, we had, for instance, just today we had an AAU softball team, I guess, that um, decided to schedule a practice and show up at a field and that's on school property. And uh, that does not meet the um, emergency orders that we're under right now. And it doesn't provide for the, uh, uh, the spacing, appropriate spacing and so forth. So we um, will be checking in with whomever we can find out connected with that group and asking them to desist. And uh, if we need to, we'll ask uh, Chief Peasley to have somebody run down and ask them to desist. Um, we had uh, um, in a really nice gesture, we had uh, a lot of high school kids show up to run the track, run the cross country field in honor of a class. That's a great thing. Um, I think it's a super idea. The only issue that I would have with it is they decided to run as a herd. And it was they, uh, they were stopped by Mr. Moore. He did have a conversation briefly with them about, hey, you know, if two of you go off, see you later. If two of you space out and see you later. And the group was respectful towards him, but decided we're running as a group and off they went as a group. Um, that does not meet the requirements. We had a, a pretty small group of kids, of uh, young guys uh, out on the field near the transportation garage. Um, they, they were playing soccer and of course, uh, soccer is a contact sport. Um, uh, we're, and it, it's just, and I, if it's, I don't care if it's eight kids, 10 kids, pick a number, it's going to get to 12 kids and 14 kids and so forth. And things are going to get harder for us at the schools because we're seeing people make decisions that uh, put us in a tough spot. So um, they, they're not intentionally trying to do that, but that's what's happening. So we're going to be posting on our fields that there are no group activities allowed, period. Um, I, I've been, I've had some contact, uh, Patty's had some contact out in Lebanon about whether it's, uh, it could be a little league group or it could be, um, uh, just a community team of some kind that says, Hey, we, you know, we can't use the, 
we can't use the town fields because the the rec department is closed so we'd like to use the high school or or one of the school fields and unfortunately we're going to have to give the same answer we're under the same guidelines there's no there's no separation of well that field you can't do it this field you can do it so um i i would expect some uh unfortunately some pushback from some community members about that who are going to be displeased but um my directive to Mr. Moore is to post each of our fields, no group activity at all. Uh, Steve, and so as are you suggesting that people, if people comply with the state guidelines for distancing, and you know, right now it's 10 people, if people are complying with the state guidelines, is that okay? Or like, yes, so, so I don't know how you define group versus. You know, five people could go together and be together, and five people could go together and be separated. So, is one yeah. allowed to the other? Yeah. So even I, I think. So even if you, even if the group is eight, let's say it's under the, let's say it's t ten or under. If they're participating in a contact sport, that doesn't meet the distancing, right? That's so that's an open meet with the state guidelines exactly so for instance people were out walking the track people were jogging the track we have several lanes you can easily keep your distance out there there were a couple of people who were walking together they came in the car together they walked the track together they got back in their car together so um we're not going to ask the you know the, the the husband and wife or the or the brother and the sister, whomever, we're not going to ask them to separate. Um, so, and we're not trying to be in the policing business, but when we see situations that are um, violating the, the intent of the social distancing regulations that we're under, we're going to have to stop and say to groups, you have to disband. That's, that's the, you, you can't be participating in these kinds of things. So that means that, uh, for instance, no, like, like if a baseball team said, hey, we want to use the JV practice field and go in there, you can't, you can't. I mean, it, it's not happening anywhere else, period. I don't care where you go right now in the state of Maine, there, those kinds of activities do not fall under the proper criteria because even if they're spread out in the field, they come together for certain things, for directions. There's a catcher right behind a batter. There's a, you know, things, there's a person running a base, standing next to a first baseman, all of those things. And unfortunately, we're stuck in the situation where, like, like most schools, that a lot of school facilities also double up as town or city facilities. And, and, um, uh, you know, kids kids can't go to Huzzy and use a playground right now, but people seem to think, well, but we can get a team together and go do this or that. And the answer is no, there's, there's no difference between any of those kinds of activities. Separate, isolated, do your thing, get outside, get some activity. But if kids want to take a I don't care if it's a lacrosse ball. They would, they want to, I'd love to have the lacrosse kids, you know, I'd love to be able to say, sure. Um, but I can't, uh, because you know, what's going to happen as soon as we say to this group, you can, until it hits this number, it's going to hit that number. So we have to pay close attention and try to cut some of this activity off before the numbers start to grow. I think part of that is some of that's going to change come June 1st when it increases to 50 people. I've heard that rec sports leagues and all that stuff are going to start pushing the bill to get a decision from the governor on how they can do it. Uh, so it'll you be heard that what? That youth organizations are going to start pushing the pushing the agenda to, to move them forward yeah. after June 1st to see what the governor is going to have to do because there's been no guidance from the governor at all. When it comes to that type of activity yeah and it may just be on hold till the 11th till that order is going to adjust but but we'll see i i think it's the same thing with beaches right i i, I wouldn't want to be patrolling a beach right now 
uh, and trying to keep track. It's the same thing with the people coming out of the state. Are they are they doing a two week self quarantine? And so it, it, we're going to run into these kinds of problems. And this is these are some of the issues we face. Okay. Do you have any other issues to discuss or to bring up? I do not. Uh, Steve, don't we have building committee stuff to talk about? Well, like um, the big what? text message you sent us. Yeah. Construction committee. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hi, hi, Nancy. How are you tonight? <laughs> <laughs> you doing all right? You doing I right? thought I was like on the Twilight Zone for a minute. I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, See, is Steve? Yes, I see your note, Mike. Sorry to bother the board, um, but I need to run out. I just wanted to give a quick FYI, if I may. Can I just have 15 seconds? Then I need to sign off. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure, go ahead. Okay, just a quick FYI. I've worked with Tyler Windsor, and just so the board knows, next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday will be a lot of um, student pickup at the high school and middle school, everything from library book drop-off, athletic equipment drop-off, uh, picking up their yearbooks. Um, we're doing it with gloves and masks very quickly, very efficiently, kind of splitting the alphabet up and doing that. Just in case you hear anything, um, I think a very efficient three-day period after the office hours so kids can still be part of remote learning and then by Thursday afternoon, we'll have most of it taken care of um, and exceptions will be made for unique situations. But I just wanna let the board know um, that I think six through 12, that'll be happening and hopefully happening very well. There'll probably be a couple of surprise um, teachers uh, waving carefully to kids and no surprise, Becky Good will probably be out there doing her thing. I uh, just wanted to let everyone know that, just a quick FYI um, and I am heading out. Thank you for the permission to speak. Thanks, Mike, I actually, Mike, I actually appreciate that because that was, that was one of my others that I wanted to ask. So I'll follow that up with what are we doing with the K through six or K through five aspect? Because I know we've got K through five kids that need to get into the schools. To yeah, clean out so, their desks um, and their lockers and all that stuff. Oh, oh Steve, it's Audra's chance. Audra's chance to speak right there. <laughs> and a good Audra, chance you like to talk about <laughs> Have, have a good weekend. Thank you all. Thank you. And we all like your cat, Mike. Yeah, we like your cat. <laughs> so uh, the elementary schools are going to run the same thing, but not next week. We're going to probably do it the following week or the week of um, that ends June 17th. So all that information will be going home shortly. High school, same thing. They've got some dates set up to have kids come in and do Mostly it's the senior class uh, doing, a, I call it the prisoner exchange, bringing in your laptops, bringing in your textbooks. Uh, if you go into the, if you were to walk into the town hall right now, well, town squares, is everything from the lockers in the high school is bagged up by grade, sitting in graded sections and labeled with tape that says the student's name on it. So they've done a phenomenal job of keeping all of that stuff organized, and that allowed them also to go through and uh, defog all of those lockers in preparation for other opportunities. So um, we'll, uh, th yeah, there'll be some more information coming out to each grade. We're not collecting our our books or our uh, technology from from uh, K to a K. I think it's K, isn't it, Audra, all the way from K through 11? It is, K, K to 11. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're going to let people keep the technology for the summer. We don't want to take it back, do a, do a two-week quarantine, then a sterilization of it, and then maybe there's a potential stuff has to go back out. So we're just going to try to do it in one session and uh, take care of it that way. So... Denise, thank you very much. Uh, Denise, Nancy, thank you very much for your um, on the spot uh, re recollection. So I had a phone call with Bill Stockmeyer, who is that is Dollar Bill. He's the guy at Drummond Wisdom, takes care of all the dollars for the school systems, and he is recommending that the board vote on the architect fees for the major construction project to get to referendum 
which now will likely be June instead of September, um, it, June of 2021 instead of September 15. Um, I, I think that the, the referendum is, uh, needs to have a little bit of air time before that moves forward. A significant amount of the architect and engineer work has been done to date and the board and building committee have been kept apprised of all of the work that's been happening. Uh, Council Sockmeyer suggests the board memorializes the agreement, the agreed upon costs, which are as follows. 200, this was just a, a conversation. I think I had it probably at 5.30. Bill gave me a call um, tonight. Uh, so five o'clock, maybe $249,979 is the basic service fee. And that is, we, we follow the Bureau of um, Real Estate Management known as the Brum Manual. We follow their guidelines. So these are recommended percentages based on the total of a project. And then there is a $4,000 reimbursable expenses also following the Brum guidelines. So the total architect engineer costs to get to referendum would be $243,979. These expenses uh, that we're talking about, anticipated expenses, they, they, they were known to us. Uh, but the funds, interestingly enough, do not impact the bottom line of the budget because, as Denise is fond of saying, they live outside the budget. They are in a separate category allowed by the state for construction. And as you move forward um, the, and begin to work with the main municipal bond bank, uh, then those, uh, the loans kick in uh, and, and the payments on those. So um, I would need to bring that forward to you tonight. Uh, to have a board vote to approve the uh, $243,979 expenditure to continue the work. We're 70% or more on the way down the path of, of that work at this time. So can I just ask a clarifying question? Is Please. that for, is, well, so I guess the total uh, architect cost that you've got written down here is 243. I'm questioning whether it should be 253. I'm assuming it's 249.979 plus the 4,000 reimbursement. Um, so I'm going to correct a number. Uh, two, my first number in there says 249, Travis. Thank yeah. you for checking that. And that's because I did not have my glasses on when I was typing. It is $239,979 as the basic service fee. 4000 for the for the reimbursable expenses for a total cost of 243,979. Thank you for uh, picking that up. I'll make a motion to uh, approve that request. Thank you Travis. Can I get a second please? Anyone? I'll second it. Thank you Linda. Can I ask a question before we vote. Sure. Um, so are we voting to put this on the referendum that we're going to vote on in July? I don't understand what we're voting on, I guess. So um, an architect and engineer firm, we put out an RFP, uh, RFQs for those. And then we held um, interviews and selected an architect and engineer firm. What you're doing is you're approving the amount of money now that we understand the scope of the projects, you're approving the, the percentages of the amount of money that they should be able to recoup for their work. So we haven't paid them anything yet? Um, I think we may have paid them some funds already. I, I Denise could answer that. I thought it was uh, up to $50,000, but uh, this is the total amount of funds that we're we're. And so, what, so we'll vote on this would be part of the school referendum in July that we vote on? No. The, uh, it's not about the referendum for the, this is uh, not that SRF, this is not the, the sprinkler right. systems and, right. and the asbestos. This is the major construction projects for all the schools. It's about $39 million okay. that we yeah. were going to have a vote on in, on September 15th, 2020. Okay. But uh, okay. so that we'd have the timing to get 
the the contractor bids and construction bids out and be ready to go next summer with construction if the bid passed. Um, at this time, we're we're looking at it saying that we believe that the referendum for this project should not go forward until June of 2021. So what you're all you're doing tonight is approving that uh, it, uh, you're affirming and approving that we have contracted with an architect and engineer firm and that they are doing work in good faith towards that project. Okay, thank and, you. And we're gonna and we're gonna pay them if we need to. If the referendum passes in June, that referendum money that we receive would pay them. If it doesn't, we'll have to come up with a budget money to pay them at some point. Yes, yes. And because the project will go back to uh, have some modifications if it doesn't pass. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, there's been a couple of school systems that have gone four and five votes. But for the most part, um, projects are w one to two votes. Okay. All right. Did we get a second? I can't remember. Yes. No, I don't have one. Yes. Oh, wait. I and, and I did. That's right. That's right, because we were going to do heading into the voice vote. So, okay. Um, uh, can I ask a question? Yeah. Sure. I'm a little confused about the voting process. So we're not voting in September on the construction referendum? No. No, uh, given the uh, fiscal climate right now, I wouldn't advise that. We're... It, it's going to have to happen. I mean, the, the Lebanon Elementary School, how long can we put off anything to do with that? What about uh, population that we're seeing when I talk with people, for instance, just this past year, the current year, after 60 new students enroll in her school, she had 40 unenrolled from the school. So she had a gain this year of 20 students. And even though the NESDEC study said, you'll only gain eight students over the next 10 years. We're thinking, I um, already blew that. Okay. Um, where are we with the vote? Okay, uh, Becky Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallet. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert? Yes. Joanne Potter? Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. And once again, Nancy, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we have any other others? I have um, one that, that, sorry? that I kind of think, I have one that I think we can kind of discuss about future meetings. I'm not sure if this Zoom meeting is working for everybody and if we should go back to our Google Hangouts. Uh, I know tonight, we're, this is now the second meeting in a row, we're having a lot of issues with people freezing uh, as they're talking. Uh, so I think we'll put that out there for discussion and see what we want to do with that. As I understand it, the Google Hangout doesn't work for the TV station. I thought it was better tonight. I didn't hear half as much feedback as we did last time. It wasn't the feed. I have, I've heard some feedback, but not as bad, but it was more of the freezing. It was constant people that were freezing. And it seems like it's not just me that was having that issue. No, it was everybody. Yeah, I had a lot of freezing, but the static was better. I would suggest, um, I, I mean, I, I think that the Google Hangout seems to work better. Um, I also would recommend that the board and admin be on video and everybody else uh, not have video. And that way mm -hmm. we're a little bit more able to kind of see each other um, and I, I don't, most of the time, I don't think the people listening in have to be on video, but they could still, uh, well, I guess they would contact Jen if they wanted to speak. Yeah. So um, I'm in, I'm in favor of, but also hopefully before too long, we might be able to be in person again. Back together. <laughs> Your fingers crossed. Okay. Uh, speaking of other people on, do we have any public input? Jen, can you hear me? Jen was having yeah. trouble freezing. Yeah, so I can see. Uh, she's, she's texting me. She said not at this time. Okay. 
In that case, uh, can I get a motion to adjourn at 9.04 p.m.? I will make a motion to adjourn at 9.04 p.m. <laughs> Thank you, Becky. A second? I will second it. Okay, Let's excellent. <laughs> Rebecca Beal. Yes. Linda Corliss. Yes. Travis Dwyron. Yes. Denise Mallett. Yes. Lynn Manley. Yes. Nancy Newbert. Yes. Joanne Potter. Yes. And me, Estrita Schaefer, yes. <laughs> and I have some wedding anniversary uh, cinnamon pie waiting for me, so. <laughs> I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, folks. You have a good night and enjoy the Memorial Day weekend. Everybody. Stay safe, everyone. Yep. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.